busy week on the Hill as members of Congress are tackling the issue of ISIS. But members of the local delegation are also trying to keep one of our local airports from losing a bit of business. Senior political reporter Scott Thuman is at the ABC7 Capitol Hill Bureau with one local senator who is speaking out on both issues. Hi, Scott. Hi, Allison. Yeah, we're going to talk about all those subjects in a quick interview here. We're fortunate enough to be joined by Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. Senator, thanks for being here. You bet, Scott. Let's start right away with some of the latest activity regarding ISIL, the mm -hmm. terror group. Now, we know we had that attack in Texas over the weekend. Yep. There are new threats being reported at this point that there will be follow-ups and that there are what they call soldiers already here in the United States. Right. No longer lone wolves. This threat supposedly involves people who are going to take direct orders from the operative group overseas. How legitimate do we think this is, and what level of concern does that bring well, to Congress? Well, it's certainly legitimate that, that ISIL, which is headquartered in Syria, but very active on the battlefield in Syria and Iraq, and trying to spread, it's certainly legitimate that they're trying to recruit or trying to inspire others, even in lone wolf attacks. I, 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 I you know, we, we will need to dig in to see how serious it is here, but it is certainly their intent. And all of this makes even more plain the fact that, you know, we're nine months into a war. Congress hasn't even had a debate about it. We've spent $2 billion. American service members' lives have been lost in connection with this. It's time for Congress to finally do what we're supposed to do constitutionally and take up and authorize military action and give, and give some shape to the mission that we're asking people to risk their lives in. Yeah, the AUMF, we hear so much about it, and it's one of those things that's stalled on the Hill pretty yep. dramatically. It has. Why is it significant that we actually push this through? Because some people are saying this war is going to continue regardless. Why do we need that authorization well, for the president? Yeah, it, because the Constitution says we're supposed to do it that way. It's Congress that declares we're not the president, and you shouldn't just allow a president to do a unilateral war without congressional authority. But that's what we've done. I'll be speaking on the floor tomorrow. Yeah, let's make some news here. You're going to be on the floor tomorrow saying what? Talking about nine months of war without a congressional debate, without a vote. The only action was taken was taken in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in December on the resolution I introduced in September. It passed, but then it never got action on the floor before the Congress adjourned. It's time for Congress to finally say to the men and women we're asking to risk their lives overseas that this is a mission that we think is worth it and and since the beginning of this if anybody thought this was this was a threat that was going to go away ISIL has claimed credit for attacks in Libya uh, in Afghanistan um, obviously in Iraq and Syria lone wolf attacks in the United States foreign fighters going from Western Europe or North Africa it's time for Congress to finally have some backbone debate this and authorize this military I've right, got one minute left I want to ask you about this issue with the airports. Yeah, absolutely. Congress has to say it's okay to allow longer flights to come into Reagan, Reagan National Airport absolutely. if that's the case. You say you're prepared to be the jerk on this issue. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, look, the airports used to be part of the federal government and they were put in the hands of an authority for a reason so that Congress and the federal government wouldn't micromanage their operation. Um, what has happened is the long haul flights were supposed to be from Dulles to keep the lines from getting too long at Reagan because Reagan is on a much smaller smaller acreage than Dulles is, but members of Congress from the West, as you understand, they want to race to Reagan and fly home at the end of the week, right. so they've been forcing the airports to do exceptions and have long-haul flights out of Reagan. Congress is not supposed to micromanage these airports. Congress gave the power of these airports to an authority so that they wouldn't micromanage And the problem them. is you say that it's hurting Dulles, hurting business it out hurts there. Dulles. And, and so Senator Warner and I both and our members of the congressional delegation, too, we expect it to come up again this year, and we're going to fight real hard to make sure that uh, they don't keep hurting Dulles Airport. Yeah, all right, something that everyone in our area will be keeping very close eyes yeah, on. So absolutely. thank you for the uh, updates on those three very big topics. Allison Leon, back to you. All right, thanks, you, Scott. Uh, rarely do you hear a senator brag about trying to be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some news for That's you a there. a good point. <laughs>